December 24th, 1874. Like other ranch children, he learned to ride almost as soon as he learned to walk. We were brought up really Hawaiian, yeah, on Waimea. And things wasn't easy. You know, they lived with the bare necessities. They worked hard. The Hawaiian way of being a cowboy, a paniolo, is special, a uniquely Hawaiian way. He made saddles and all kinds of stuff I remember him making, you know. His father used to make skin rope. They'd salt it and then they'd stretch it to make their uh, ropes. They don't make ropes like that anymore. The Hawaiian Paniolo did many of the same things cowboys on the mainland did. But because Hawaii is a special environment, the Hawaiian cowboy had to make some unique adaptations. For one thing, Hawaii was an island nation. The biggest cattle market was in Honolulu on the island of Oahu. But the biggest ranches were on the islands of Maui and Kauai and Hawaii. The island of Hawaii had no deep draft harbors. The steamships to take the cattle to the markets on Oahu had to anchor offshore in the bay. The Paniolo had to drive the pipi, the cattle, into the water, and then they had to tie them to the sides of the longboats. The longboats paddled out to the steamships. And finally, the people were hoisted on board. Paniolo tested their skills in rodeos. Four of the Paniolos, Ikua Purdy, his cousins, Eben Rawhide Ben Lowe, and Jack Lowe, and the Lowe's half-brother, Archie Ka'awa, were among the best of the Paniolo. In 1908, Angus McPhee, a roper in Buffalo Bill's Wild West show, visited Hawaii. Inspired by their victories over Angus, Evan Rawhide Ben organized a trip to the Cheyenne Roundup in Wyoming. Angus got them the invitation. It read, bring your saddles. Horses will be provided. Well, the story I heard about when they went up to Wyoming, I don't know if that's just a long time. Yeah, but I don't know if that's just one true story, what I heard. So yes, it was, maybe. Yeah, when they went up there, the, the guys up there would give them the kind of um, untrained horses, kind of not good horses. And then him and another man went up. What was the other guy's name, I think? Here in, here in place, too. Kawa. Is that who was? Kawa, yeah. And he only had one arm. That's true. One arm. Every day we would take the horses in the river. When everybody was sleeping and they were breaking in the river. I, I thought I heard the couple would pick the ugliest one out of all the horses. They were given unbroken horses, and they did break them shoulder high in the water at night. No one expected them to win. But when the dust finally settled, Jack Lowe came in sixth, Archie Ka'awa was third, and Ikua Purdy was world champion. Two Bronconakas from Hawaii provided the big sensation of the day at Frontier Park yesterday. Iku Purdy and Archie Te'ini, life youngsters from the far Pacific, invaded the heart of the American cow country and taught the white ropers a lesson in how to handle steers. Here was something new. The idea of a Hawaiian defeating a real cowboy at the cowboy's own particular game, and the crowd made the most of the novelty. You know, it's a great to compete. The cowboys up here for ropers. What happened? He came home with the bacon. <laughs> he told me I cannot follow his footsteps. That gift, he went up to mainland to compete with those boys, was given by the Lord. So I cannot follow his footsteps if the Lord wouldn't give the gift the way he gave him. So I told him, I think so. Yeah. He's so proud of me riding horse, saddle or no saddle. 
the party don't like when I go out late in the evening and coming home to them. I'm so busy riding the horse. He was a man that that never come out and, you know, talk about himself or even let anybody talk about him. He was just a humble man. You know, and that's why the whole family is our whole family is humble people. And we love him and we always talk about him, remember what, how he did this, how he did, what kind of stories he told us. Because Ikua was a humble man, he didn't often tell the story of the Wyoming rodeo. But all Hawaii was thrilled with his victory. The parties in Honolulu and on the other islands went on for weeks. At last, Ikua and his cousins got back to the Big Island ranches. But soon, Ikua went to Kauai. They had a rodeo there, so when Mr. Uh, Baldwin went to Kauai, he heard about my father. So he got in touch with my father, talked to my father, and he told my father that he wants him at Upalku Ranch. Well, I don't know what he had talked to my father. So my father, okay, so he came to the ranch. Well, then, that I, I, well, we came here when I was about a year, I think, old. They used to have cattle and try to drive all the cattle in, and they would come back down, bring them through town. And one time, uh, my cousin and I were sitting on the fence line, <laughs> and I don't know what happened, but my cousin fell off, and, you know, the cows were just rushing by. And my grandpa, I don't know how he did it, but he came right there and scooped him right off the ground with all the cattle and everything. I never forget that because I thought he was goner. But my grandpa came from out of nowhere. And he had Kaui in, on his saddle. Then after everything went through, he went down to the stables. And you know what happened? He took his belt off and boom. <laughs> I never forget that because he was looking for me and I was in the hay room. In the, underneath the hay because I never forget that day because I was I was so scared. He wasn't a very big man in height and everything. He was small in stature, but he had a big, big heart. And everybody was welcome. Anything was welcome, you know. And he wasn't a show off. You know, they talk about him to him, and he said, let's talk about something else. You know, there's lots of other things to talk about besides me. So that's the way it always was, you know? People would come from the mainland, and Mr. Baum would bring them over, you know, to talk to him about this and that, to interview him. He didn't like that. He said, there's other things to talk about besides me. On this reunion day, how do you feel? Well, I feel proud Can we this reunion. Uh -huh. Because uh, there's so much grandchildren around here, and uh, I'm very proud for them to know that they have uh, a, great a great grandfather. Such as? And uh, I at least that they know who their grandfather is. So that's how we having this reunion. Just my father's children and their children and their grandchildren today.